AEW Dynamite. After last week's debut episode, 1.4 million viewers and just a relatively solid showing, I wanted to see how this company followed it up in week number two without some of the appeal of, you've been building up to this moment for months and what's going to happen and you know they're going to pull out all the stops to try and make a strong first impression. Now as you kind of settle into more BAU business as usual, You've got the slog of having to put out a weekly two-hour wrestling television program. And in a few weeks, you've got your full gear pay-per-view that you're building up to for November 9th. Wanted to see what business as usual would potentially look like. And based off of what I saw tonight, initial returns, and, and, I will say the show opened relatively strongly. It opened relatively strongly. The tag match between the Young Bucks and Private Party, the crowd was really hot for, really hyped for, really interested in it. And while granted, this type of wrestling is not exactly my flavor, I'm a mark for fan reactions and engagement levels and so forth. And this at least had that. I would prefer some type of heel face dynamic or some type of desire to tell at least some type of story in the match, but we're dealing with the bucks of sucks, so you don't really get that a whole lot. They tend to get a little too devoted to their spots and kind of stubbornly clinging to them. But in this particular case, at least I will say, the bucks did good business. They put over the private party team Private Party had a big showing. They had a big night here. This was kind of a legit surprise. You know, the Bucks were the top seed in this tag tournament, and they're out in the first round. And I kind of like the element of that, that you never know what's going to happen. And just because these guys are executive VPs of the company, just because they're big names on the tag team scene and in the independent wrestling world, doesn't mean that they're automatically going to be booked to win every time. You know, sometimes you could say, well... You book yourself to lose because you think it's the right decision, but it's really not. In this particular case, I think it made a lot of sense, especially what happened later on in the night. There are probably bigger and more important fish for the Young Bucks to fry here. You don't need to pound them into the tag title picture. You can always come back to that at every, any point in time. So in that sense, I appreciate the fact that they made a good call, did what was right for business, and we keep it moving. Then you follow that up with this Chris Jericho promo segment. And I'm still now trying to figure out what I make out of this inner circle faction. You got LAX, you got Sammy Guevara, and you got Jake Hager. He is one of the weirdest looking factions that I've seen in a long, long time. But nonetheless, Jericho's promo was really good. And on a show that clearly is not going to feature a lot of strong promo work, at least initially, and not a lot of even devoted promo interview segments, it is stuff like this that reminds you of why you put the strap on Chris Jericho. Are you going to do put it on Hangman Page and expect him to carry a 15-minute segment like this? you got to be out of your damn mind. You know, Jericho works as the champion right now for this company. And it is stuff like this is exactly the reason why. The promo segment was really, really good. Now, you got clowns and idiots that are in the tank for this company, such as Bruce Mitchell. I don't know if they're paying you kickbacks or you're just getting more access to the wrestlers. This is where you got to be careful, people, because you got to wonder what the agendas are for some of these guys, because some of these people are just ridiculous and they're biased, and they don't even hide it. Like, you know, with Meltzer in both the EW and New Japan, frankly, to sit there and say that this is the best promo segment that Chris Jericho has ever done. You know, people are tuning into AEW as an alternative. What we don't want to hear is that unrealistic spin, live in the moment, recency bias bullshit that we associate with WWE every time there's a show. It's the greatest show of all time. This is the greatest thing to happen of all time. And you get to the point where you're insulting the fans' intelligence. 
out of all of the promos of all of the years of Chris Jericho, this, this one promo, that wasn't even an opening, middle of the show main event, main event, is the best one that he's ever done in his entire career. You are a stupid, biased idiot. And anybody that listens to people such as Bruce Mitchell and buys into this bullshit deserve whatever they get. That's clown school stuff. Period. Only thing I've got is the whole thing with Jake Hager and what happened last week in the main event was the primary hook to come back and watch this week. In my opinion, you would have been much better served putting this promo segment first, then doing Young Bucks versus Private Party. Now, a lot of the hardcore wrestling fans are not going to agree with me, which, if anything, makes me feel validated in saying so. You need to break up your shows. I am not saying you need a promo segment every week. Absolutely not. What I am saying is you don't need a 15 to 20 minute damn wrestling match kicking off your show every damn week. Too much of any one thing and too much consistency of the same type of thing all the time presented in the same ways in the same spots is not helpful or healthy either. The Young Bucks private party match was not the hook for watching this show. It was not the most important thing coming out of last week's show. You should be diving right into why the hell is Jake Hager here? What the hell is he here for? Why is he associated with Chris Jericho? And you had to wait a segment to do that. Not the best, best programming booking decision, in my humble opinion. Once you get past kind of that opening 30, 40 minutes of the show, it really kind of grinded to a halt for me until the end. It really did. Darby Allen versus Jimmy Havoc. I look at these two guys. And maybe in time, I'll grow to appreciate and like Darby Allen, but I don't right now. I look at Jimmy Havoc, and I still can't really figure out what I make of his comb over. You know, it's just weird. I look at these two dudes, and I'm sitting there and saying to myself, you know, you've actually got a legit, believable, credible world champion in Chris Jericho. If you are going to have him defend his belt on television, he should have believable main event threat level competition. And Darby Allen and Jimmy Havoc ain't it, no matter how much you try to book that into being. It's not it. Are you really going to remember much of anything from this match? No, to me it's just two dudes bumping around. Like, who fucking cares? I don't really care about the match. I don't really care about either of these guys. And I don't really know that I've been given a reason as to why I should care about either one of these guys. And again, if anything, I think it devalues Jericho being the champion and having to defend the strap against either one of these two fucks. My opinion. Then the women's tag match. Why am I supposed to care about these ladies? Why am I supposed to care about this match? What's the purpose of this match? What story are we trying to sell here? What program or storyline are we potentially trying to build here? I don't know. We didn't really get much of that. And then to top it all off, you put this right smack dab in the middle of the show in that crossover period at 9 p.m. Eastern. Like this was really what you thought was going to draw on the people as freaking Riho? You must be insane! And maybe this is just me coming across a little jilted this week because... This show was very, very heavy on the wrestling component. And again, the hardcore fanboy cocks are going to sit there and say, well, yeah, why is that a bad thing? That's going to be the identity of the product. If they want to continue to appeal to you and only you, then they should go right ahead and do that. If they want to grow their audience above and beyond what they drew for their premiere episode, they must do better. They must do different. They must do more of other things. That is not opinion. That is fact. That is how this works. It is documented, and we all damn good and well know it. And really, truly, honestly, if you want AEW to succeed, if you want it to not just survive but thrive, it is time to be a little less selfish and me-centered about what you want in the presentation. Because I promise you, going down this path, of having a bunch of medium to long length matches 
that don't really have a lot of purpose, that don't tell a lot of story, that don't help with developing characters or pushing or advancing storylines is not the fucking way to go. If people wanted that shit, they will watch WWE! Seriously. And what was weird, too, was when they did the whole stuff with Orange Cassidy, then they go right into their Sean Spears sitting on the ramp. I'm like, what the hell? We're just now going into Spears and Moxley? Like, that to me feels like a match that you should have been building up throughout the night. You should have had an interview with one or both of them. And if your answer is, well, they do that on the YouTube channel, ding dong, dub dicks, what percent of the total television audience is actually going to check out the freaking YouTube show? And if you're not promoting that that is happening on the YouTube show or on Being the Elite or any whatever the hell else, then it's stupid. And your defense for it is stupid. Stop it. Stop it. As hard as this match, it just, like, who are you supposed to get behind? Who are you supposed to hate? Where, where's the potential money drawing mechanism here? Like, you have two guys that you can potentially take seriously, two guys that have some face recognition, some name recognition, and you just kind of throw them into the middle of the card. Uh, kind of the thing, too, with, with Spears is you didn't even beat Cody. Now he doesn't win here. You know, those type of things matter. And especially if you're building your brand off of wins and losses matter, you shouldn't be taking a guy like Spears who has a heater of a manager and totally blanchard and chopping him out. You just should not be doing that. The stuff between um, Moxley and Omega kind of works. I like Pac being involved. I like Pac being on commentary, bitching about Darby Allen and Jimmy Havoc. Why the hell are these two guys getting an opportunity? Da -da -da -da. I mean, I was cool with that. That worked for me. Um, but I, I would have liked to have gotten more out of this match. Like, this should have been in a one-hour main event. This should have been built up to. And it just really wasn't. And then we get to the main event, which helped save this show for me quite a bit. I, I'm still trying to, again, figure out this inner circle faction and what to really make out of it. And I don't need to make the decision on that right now. Um, but as you're going in and as Dustin's getting beat down, Cody Rhodes makes an appearance. It's kind of weird. You had already done the lights off and lights on effect once earlier on in the show, so you do it again with Cody. Like, that was kind of weird to me, I can't lie, is you're coming out there to save your brother. Totally logical. But that's the way you choose to present it? Like, does that really make sense? Is that something that people can really get behind and really believe? Wouldn't you be more concerned about saving your brother than hitting the freaking crossroads and stuff? Yeah, working the crowd like, you know what I mean? He should have been bolting from the backstage area as soon as it happened to come save his brother. Like, to me, that's more believable. To me, more importantly, that's more relatable. But as Cody Rhodes is getting down, beat down, here comes MJF. And I love the little tease with the chair as Jericho is hold, and everybody is holding up Cody. Is he going to hit Cody? And then MJF attacks the inner circle and the crowd goes crazy. And some people are saying, why would you do that to your top heel? I'll tell you why. I will defend AEW on this decision. Because at the end of the day, you are going in a certain path at some point in time sending MJF down the babyface path when this association with Cody Rhodes will make the inevitable heel turn mean that much more. Because now you have really started to convince people that he might actually truly be a babyface and somebody's supposed to cheer, and then damn, you yank the rug out from under him on November 9th or sometime afterwards, and you're off doing decent business for a couple of months. So that really worked for me. I don't like the cheap shot that they hit MJF with, but what are you going to do? I will say the Darby Allen skateboard spot was pretty cool looking to me. I'm okay with that. I like the fact that Jericho was talking trash at the end of the night. Like, there was a lot of chaos here. So at least there was a lot to get you involved to kind of send you home happy type of deal. Running the bucks out now, maybe you're setting up an inner circle versus elite type of feud, and maybe that could potentially work. Sure, what the hell, why not? Um, but the main event in general was strong. Not necessarily because of the in-ring action, because of all the other stuff that they did. 
I think you got to be careful going down that pipe one too many times with the crazy, dusty, crash TV finishes. But still, a brand that's early on in its being, you're trying to plant the seed of, we need something big in the main event to kind of close everything out and give you a hook to force you to want to tune in next week. And to me, a main event like this at least does that, if nothing else. Whereas so often the case, again, to use the WWE comparison, you just don't get that. They will have the baby faces stand tall, and you're like, well, what the hell is the point of me tuning in next week? There is absolutely no cliffhanger element. There is no suspense. There is no surprise. There is no reason to care about any of this. At least doing stuff like this gives you a reason to kind of care. In terms of what I liked about the show, even though I would have flipped the opening promo segment with Jericho and the Young Bucks private party match, in general, the first 35, 40 minutes of the show was pretty strong. It was pretty strong. I loved Jericho's promo. I liked the fact that he's the world champion. I liked the main event and kind of how this show closed out. So those are some really good things here. What I didn't like, what they have to work on and they must work on. Number one, where is the damn Luchasaurus? He is six foot five Mexican in a fucking Lucha mask sitting there doing tail whips with his legs. He's got future signature star written all over him. But you don't feature him in either of your first two weeks shows? Because you want to have a fucking Darby Allen Jimmy Havoc circle jerk match? Idiots! Ooh, send him down, Slate Daddy. He'll be on the show this week. Well, guess what? Dumb dicks, he won! Damn it! Like, these first few weeks, you should be setting the stage and the table for who your most important players are. Trying to draw people in, because sometimes you only have one chance to make a good impression. That dude is different. Fucking feature him! Stupid! Stupid, stupid, stupid! We want the Luchasaurus! I better get him next week, damn it. Better! Besides that, though, one thing that I look at that really concerns me about this week's show is the lack of variety. Wrestling at its best is like a variety show. You have something for everyone, and you mix things up. And especially when you are in the developing early stages of who you are as a brand and your identity and so forth, you must do better with character development, with storytelling, than what they have done these first two weeks. They got a couple of coals in the fire, but not a lot. And they need more. They need a lot more. Because again, I'm going to emphasize for the umpteenth damn million time of doing this all these years on YouTube, the matches don't mean crap if you don't care about the characters, the story, and the consequence for that match. I know a lot of you have had your standards lowered so much that you see a bunch of guys do a bunch of spots and go kill each other for real and make less money, whereas people used to do this stuff that looked real but was totally fake and made more money doing it. If you want the matches to matter, if you want them to have consequence, and you want people to truly have that commitment and that buy-in to what you're doing, you must mix it up. You need interviews. You need skits. You need promo segments. You had one primary promo segment the whole night, and it's pretty much the rest of this shit is all match, match, match. I didn't tune in to watch some freaking higher production value ROH. I didn't tune in to watch WWE under a different name. Give me characters, goddammit. Give me stories that matter. Give me storylines that are interesting and compelling. Give me all of those things that I can't get in other places in wrestling today. Don't give me more of the same crap that I'm already saying! Now, all these other biased cops are going to sit there and talk about how great and awesome this show was. Continue to feed into that bullshit. Continue to feed that narrative. Because in a few months, this product, this brand, is going to pay a price when nobody cares about what the hell is going on with these characters. Nobody's going to care about the matches because they have no reason to care. It's not that hard. Yes, I'm a wrestling show. You can have too much wrestling. 
Wrestling is a piece of it. The in-ring action is a component of it. It is not the be-all, end-all. And if you want to be big-time major leagues, instead of bush leagues on a major budget, then you must get that through your skulls. It is about more than the damn in-ring action. Give us some interesting characters. Give us some goddamn stories. And start to better build up to your full gear show in November. That's why you need me. Through all the muck of the bias of all these other people out there. While I might be an angry wrestling man, OTR Essential truly is not the wrestling show you want. Just the wrestling show you need. Because sometimes you need a little truth talk. And while this show had some good stuff this week, they need to work on a lot of things. Let's be honest.